Thank you to Motion VFX for sponsoring this video. So next up is the SDK. Some amazing products have been announced at WWDC. Stop me if you've already seen this. And some questionable ones. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. This is the new Mac Pro. This year though, there's one feature that I've been waiting for. WWDC is just wrapping up. They announced a bunch of new things, but perhaps what I'm most excited about this year is software and what's coming to your phone. Also, if you want to know how we created that awesome intro using Motion VFX, stay tuned to the end of the video. Mark it down in your calendar. Today, June 22nd, 2020, something good actually happened this year. Something we've wanted for many years. Uh, iOS 14 was announced and it brought with it widgets for the home screen. I never thought I'd see the day. I figured I'd be the crazy person outside saying it's gonna come this year and it never happened. We finally have widgets for the home screen. Not weird widgets slide it off to the side, but actual widgets on your home screen. You could resize them. You could put them where they want. They're smart, they're adaptable. You can get them from the today view. You can get them from the icon. You have them now anywhere you want. And a ton of options will be available uh, when iOS comes out. You can do calendar, you can do battery, you can do weather, third party widgets, all of it full featured now finally with iOS 14. So Apple's doing some things new. Uh, they created their own widget called Smart Stack and it'll dynamically change what you're going to show throughout the day. So in the morning, be able to show you news, then it'll evolve and show your calendar. Maybe it notices that you're active and it'll start showing you all of your activity center. Uh, it'll evolve with you throughout the day. Really nice to have, uh, but finally widgets on iOS. So another big the missing feature that's certainly been on other OS's, uh, picture in picture makes its way to iOS 14 works as you'd imagine. You watch a video, swipe up to go home, and that video will come down to the right side of your screen. Doesn't have to be there though, you can move it around. You could pinch to zoom to resize it. When you're on the home screen again, you can actually swipe it off to the side and the audio will keep playing and you can swipe it back home. Nice to have, I'm not a big picture in picture guy. I uh, very rarely use it on Android, but if that's something that you like, at least Apple is now giving you options. This was a surprisingly like self-aware presentation from Apple. They talked about some of the shortcomings with the iOS design, namely the screens and screens and screens of apps. And I think they sort of touch on a point that you forget what you have on screen three and four. You kind of get muscle memory from maybe your home screen and one over, but you tend to forget what else is there. So they created something new called App Library, and we kind of expected to see something like an app view or sort of a full list like we saw in previous Windows phone devices. This is more of a AI way to show all of your apps and will curate them by category into folders. They didn't talk about if you can sort of rename the folders, reorganize app, but it will show everything right there. And I think most importantly, it's got a search bar at the top so you can search for all those apps. So if you tend to forget what's on page three or four of your home screen, you actually hide those pages now. When you go to App Library, you can just search and those apps will show up there. And App Library actually will show up as the last page too that you have set up. So if you just keep swiping over, eventually you'll get there. So Siri's getting smarter and also getting a makeover. Uh, now, instead of taking up the entire screen, when you ask it to like launch Safari, you now get a little icon that pops up in the bottom that doesn't take over what you're doing, uh, which is awesome. And also when you ask it questions, it'll show you the answers without taking up your whole screen. So you ask it the weather, it'll just pull the weather up at the top for you. It's doing on-device dictation now. It's also doing on-device translation. So they showed some cool examples of how this can really be a device to speak with people when you're in a foreign country or you don't speak the language. You turn the phone landscape, you actually have a conversation with somebody a different language and it'll translate it almost live as you're going. And actually it'll smartly detect what language you speak, what language the other person speaks uh, and translate that for you as you go. And even outside of Siri, that's actually its own app now called Translate built into uh, iOS 14. All right, so messages is clearly coming for like Slack and, and Telegram. Uh, messages is getting way smarter this time around. Uh, so let's start with pin messages. You can now pin messages to the top. So if you message somebody all the time, or there's a thread you like to keep track of, that can always be at the top. 
And again, Apple being kind of self-aware, they're saying sometimes you can't find the thread you want. So they just made it easier to do that. So now also we have inline responses. So if you have a group thread and somebody asks a question and then someone follows up with something else, uh, you can actually reply to that exact question. You can actually pull out uh, those inline replies and view them as almost their own messages, which is super nice to have as well. Probably one of my favorite features of another app that I use, Telegram, is mentions. So if somebody writes your name, it's considered a, a mention, I'll get notified that I'm the one that somebody's asking questions to. So that is now coming messages as well. So if you're on a group thread where you get notifications every 14 seconds from somebody who replies, you can also get notified whenever your name is mentioned. They did a bunch of other cool stuff too with how the groups are displayed and pictures that are shown. You can now set a default picture for groups and the person who replies will show up as a little icon up there. Uh, that stuff aside, Memoji got way smarter as well. There's now support for masks and face coverings. Different ages uh, are there as well and just more customization options to make Memoji look more like your facey. So Maps is getting smarter as well. And if you haven't given Apple Maps a shot, it's, it's gotten way better since probably the last time you used it. It's, it's now, I think, really good. And their privacy policy is probably amongst the best in the navigation business. But there's now there's new ways there. So there's cycling options if you want to ride a bike. There's EV options if you're on a route with EV charging. Uh, they just sort of added little things to sort of make it more full featured. And I think now more of a direct competitor, almost feature for feature uh, with Google Maps. So CarPlay also got some predictable updates. There's now wallpapers on there to sort of customize it for your car. But there are also new app categories in there for like EV charging and a few others. Oh, the big one though was Car Key. And this was the one that had been rumored for a while. Essentially it uses, at least initially, NFC in your phone to create a key for new cars. And it's launching with the 2021 BMW 5 Series, but the thought is more cars will come you set a key, you tap it to the handle using NFC and you can unlock it, put it in a wireless charger, for example, that authorizes it that you're good to drive, push the start button and you can go. You can share those keys as well. You can set restricted keys for like teen drivers if you want and then revoke those keys whenever you like. And they show up actually in the wallet as they look like kind of credit cards. Uh, so that is not necessarily an iOS 14 feature. It's actually coming to iOS 13. So people can use that right away. And they did say down the road, so probably next year, start taking advantage of the U1 chip. So you don't have to actually physically tap the phone to the car. It'll sort of know that you're close to the car and authorize it. We sort of see that already with the current generation Tesla's Model 3 and the Model Y. So coming to more cars, it's pretty awesome. App Store also got some updates, something called App Clip. Uh, essentially, that's a under 10 megabyte sort of snippet of what an app can do. So if you wanna, if you're in a restaurant, you wanna order from them, and you don't have their app installed, you can check out an app clip, it'll launch really quickly. And those clips will show up in the app library and you can download the full app pretty easily. It's just a smaller app snippet to do what you wanna do, that I'm gonna download the full, you know, giant app to do certain things. So you wanna rent the scooter, for example, use an app clip, you can do that without having to download uh, the full application. And you can choose to download that full app if you want to. So that is iOS 14. There's a bunch of other updates that came today too on the software front, tvOS, iPadOS, watchOS, but I thought iOS was really the big one. I think that impacts most people. So what is your favorite feature? Something missing that you wanted to be there? I really want widgets on my home screen. Um, that's the one I'm most excited about. But again, let me know down below if there's a feature that it added that you wanted or one that was missed. So if you wanna know how we created that intro, we used a template from this video sponsor, Motion VFX. They have hundreds of templates and plugins help you create really awesome visuals, super fast and easy, and make you look like a professional editor. So for this one, we downloaded a template called Photo Exhibition, added the media we needed, then we just changed some colors, blended it all together, and that's it. That's all it took. If you want to learn more about Motion VFX, we'll link to them down below.